Today we're going to be working with XML beginning uh, the very first process of working with XML. So let's suppose that we have data in a table that is XML data. So I'm going to do a quick select here. We have a record in this case we just have two uh, records that are XML records. We have an ID1, an ID2, and then of course we have the XML data and you see that the XML data is kind of like a hyperlink that you can click on um, and it will pull up XML data, right? You have an ID of one here, record ID, then you have machine two, and then you have six between start, you have a number ID underneath that which is two, details maybe, time, you have a date stamp between here, then you close the number and close the record. So it's very interesting, but if you look at these data, you'll notice that you have a little bit of complication here, right? We have different types of XML data here. For instance, six is between an open start and a close start, but ID, record ID, or ID is under the open tag record, uh, but it has an equals, and then of course in uh, quotation marks, and then machine is also under record, uh, but it also is in quotation marks. The same thing is true with number ID, you have two, which is in um, quotation marks, and details are under number, also in quotation marks, but then time is between an open time tag and a closed time tag. Now if you've looked at XML, and if you're not familiar with XML, I would suggest you look at it, because it, it can kind of look like HTML, even though it's not HTML, but it can look like it. And it, it kind of follows a similar syntax in the sense that you have an open tag, a closed tag, and so on and so forth. But it's, it is not like that at all. And for those of you who've queried it, uh, know that. So let's talk about XML today and querying XML. We're going to just do the basics. Um, and the basics in this case is we're going to actually query uh, this, and we want these values stored as columns. That's our goal. So we want these, you know, we want record like for instance this ID to be a column, machine to be a column, start, whatever's between there to be a column, um, the ID for number to be a column, and so on and so forth. Okay, so I'm going to just show you the solution as to what this should look like. And you can see these are the XML data here that we had before, and this is the rule result. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to close out the XML. It's right there, but I'm just going to leave it like that. And then we're going to look at this result. So we have record ID, we have machine, we have what was between the start, we have the number ID, we have the number of details, and then we have, of course, <clears throat> uh, the number date. And again, if we look at that XML string here, uh, you can see. That's where that comes from. So, how did we do that? Okay, the first thing is we selected these data. Uh, first of all, we selected ID and the XML data from the XML table, and of course we alias that as XT. So these values right here, which you probably are looking at, come from the cross apply, so let's not look at that for just a second. Instead, let's look at um, that what we have essentially here with ID and XML data is the same that we did up here with this table. So basically that just produces that result. Okay. Then we cross applied the nodes. Now notice this is very key here because the XML data is the column where we have the XML. So we cross applied and notice the syntax here is there's the alias, the table, the column, and then the nodes. Now you may notice, let's look at this XML data here, because this will show you how we do eat. Notice where we pulled each item. So first of all, we're looking at record right here. And then below here, we're looking at record and number. And if you look at the tags, you can see why. So we have record, we have ID within record, we have machine within record, and start is in with is within record too, right? But ID here is within number, and details here is within number. And if you look at the time is within number, right? So it's not here, we're going further into the querying. So it's kind of like if you go to your C drive and you have a folder um, called backups, and then in the folder backups you have another folder 
uh, called last year's backups and then you go into that folder well it's very similar these items are within this first folder if you would and then when we have a new number so on and so forth we have another folder think of it that way okay so we're looking at record first and then we are going to alias that here's the aliasing and we uh, the syntax here for so we're going to get the ID of record so this record ID of one here okay so we're going to do n dot b dot value and then we're going to pull out what is this this is a small int right or an int or whatever you want to call it so um, it is a number basically so I'm putting the at symbol here the ID one there's a syntax notice that's between a single quote and then comma between single quote the type and that's the record ID and actually what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna call this record machine because that's under record so again I'm pulling out the machine now notice when it's just between the tags notice how six is between start start it doesn't there's no equals and then um, a double quote or I'm sorry a, a quotation mark and, and then an, another quotation mark <coughs> three this is why that's key Notice when it's between a quotation mark, we have an at symbol pulling out the item. When there's no quotation mark, when it's just between an open tag and a closed tag, it's just start. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Okay, so record ID, record machine, and the reason why I want to do that syntax there is it's within the record tag. Um, start is under whatever start is. Then we have an ID again. Now we're using this right here because we're looking further into number. We're querying further. Again, some of your Excel query, XML querying, you may only do very shallow querying. Um, in this case, we're doing the full thing. All right, so now we're going to pull out ID. Notice how ID is between quotation marks and or the value is. And then the details, the value is between quotation marks. But again, time is not. So time, there's no at symbol there, right? And uh, let's see, number ID, number details, and this should actually be time. I don't know why this is not oops, time, but um, that's probably why right there. <clears throat> okay, so then let's look at this. All right, so it did exactly what, and we can, we can look and check, but you'll see six and then two details maybe, and then you can see the time, correct? and then the next record is correct. Um, so if we were to get rid of this, and just like that we've queried uh, the table, or queried the XML data. Now, why is that important? Well, <clears throat> in the past, Twitter didn't, I don't think Twitter does XML data anymore. Um, but there are some social networks or you have like discuss you may have comment platforms that allow you to obtain XML data this is how you can query your XML data and keep in mind like for again for a while on Twitter it followed a similar format so once you query it the first time you then have a tool that you can break down each time uh, this is also useful for uh, there's certain like uh, I'm trying to think of the term uh, plans in SQL Server that are saved as XML and this allows you to query them. So being familiar with querying XML and this is just part one we'll get into some other stuff but you can see some uh, a little bit of the complication today if you have um, different types of data and you'll see it in XML sometimes it'll be between quotation marks sometimes it'll just between an open and a closed tag uh, but being familiar with how to query XML is very useful it's it is not a good thing to to work with someone who's not familiar how to query XML because there are a lot of data out there that come in the format of XML and so being able to really look at that and parsing that is very important 